if you're climbing on a stationary rope system, you have to tie off one end of your rope so that you can climb on the other end. You can do that either with some kind of a basal anchor where you tie around the base of the tree or a canopy anchor where you tie somewhere up in the canopy of the tree. What I'm going to show you in this video is a, a variety of different kinds of basal anchors that you can potentially use. Uh, the first one I'm going to show you is what's called a hard tie-off or sometimes called a high strength tie-off. Okay, and you start that one by just wrapping the end of your climbing rope twice around the trunk of the tree. In this case I've got an eye spliced in the end of the rope that makes it easier but I could just use a knotted uh, uh, loop in the end of the rope. Okay. Okay, so take the rope twice around the tree trunk. Okay. And then I'm going to use, in this case, I'm going to use a screw link to uh, lock this off. I could use a carabiner, but I prefer screw links just because they're stronger, uh, less likely to, to uh, break than a carabiner. Okay. So just put that through there. Screw your screw link shut. Make sure every time that you screw that screw link all the way until it's closed. Like that. Okay. Then pull the slack out of the rope. And now I'm ready to climb. And my climber over here on the far side, if I pull all the slack through, okay. So it's going to look like that when I've got it set up, but right above my tie-off here, I want to put an alpine butterfly, okay? And the reason for that is just so that in the event the climber is hurt, I can easily tie something to the rope to lower them to the ground. Okay? All right, so now, when it's all set up, that's what it looks like, okay? So the purpose for the Alpine Butterfly is just so that if I had to lower the climber, I could tie off another lowering system below the, the uh, high strength tie off, hook into that loop, disconnect this, and lower the climber to the ground. Okay. So uh, this is a really good, strong way to tie off. Uh, the one disadvantage is that it's more complicated to do a rescue if you have to lower the climber. Okay. If you use a carabiner right here, make sure that that gate is turned away from the trunk of the tree so that it doesn't accidentally get mashed open or filled with debris. Okay, You don't have to worry about it too much with the uh, screw link, but with the carabiner it's definitely really important to do that. Okay, Alright, so that's a high strength tile. The, uh, all the rest of the, the base linkers I'm going to show you are systems that are where you can lower the climber to the ground. They're called rescue ready or lowerable systems, okay? And they pretty much all start out the same way. With one exception. Okay, and that is you have to uh, have some kind of a basal anchor like this, okay? It's just a piece of rope and in the end of it I have a spliced eye here, okay, or I'm sorry, a ring that's spliced in. Uh, I could use a carabiner there uh, or even a knotted rope if I had to, but, but but I like the rings, it just makes it really easy. Okay, so you take that ring once around the trunk of the tree and then you pull a bite of rope through there, okay. Pull just enough rope so that you have enough to tie a bowline, I'm sorry, a figure eight on a bite, okay. Okay, so just tie your figure eight there. Like that. Okay, so there's my figure eight. Okay. As you can see, when you pull on that, it, it just cinches tight against the tree trunk so it won't come sliding up the trunk. Okay. All right, so you can use a variety of different kinds of lowering systems here. Uh, one of the simplest, if you have a a good auto locking device like this is a uh, a D4. Uh, you could use a Petzl rig or an ID, something like that. But a D4 is great. Um, and you attach this to the figure eight knot right there. Okay. All right. So again, my climber is going to be over on pull the slack through here. Okay, so my climber's over here on this side of the rope, okay? I just install this 
the D4 onto my rope like this. Okay. Make sure it's closed completely, okay? So I'm going to pull a little slack there just to raise my climber up here. Alright, so that's how the system looks like when it's set up and ready to go. Before you start climbing on this, you want to make sure that the handle is in the locked position. And over on this side, you want to tie a little slip knot. Like that, okay? That just makes it so that the, the, the device is locked. There's a knot here, so there's no way it can actually slip back through the device, okay? Uh, and in the event that I have to lower the climber, all I have to do is pull the slip knot out of there, hold on to the uh, one side with my brake hand, and, and uh, pull back on the handle, and I can lower the climber down, okay? Um, this system is really good, especially if you have a crew that's not really experienced, uh, because it's pretty hard to screw up. It's pretty bomb-proof, okay? Um, all you have to know how to do is operate the handle while you hold on, uh, while you lower with, with your brake hand, okay? All right. So that's um, an auto-locking device uh, in the event that you let go, the, the climber's not going to fall, okay? That's how the auto-locking device works, okay? Okay, in the event that you don't have an auto-locker, you can use a bunch of other different types of belay systems to lower the climber. Okay, all right. You could use any number of things. You could use uh, a rappel rack. You could use, this is a, a, a Kong Hydrobot. You can use a figure eight. Uh, almost any kind of belay device will work, okay? Since most people have a figure eight, that's the one I'm going to show you here first. Okay. So in this case, you're just going to install your figure eight on the rope like that, okay, and clip it in to your figure eight down here, okay. All right, so that's how the system's going to work, but you need to add a lock on here so that uh, it's, it's an auto-locking type of system, okay. And the simplest way to do that, uh, that I know of, is just right above your figure eight here, put a friction hitch. Uh, I like to use a VT. Um, you could use almost any kind of friction hitch, but, okay, I'm going to just go on, yeah, let's go to the wrap, no, let's not, let's just go, got too many wraps there, all right, all right, and then you're just going to take that, and you're going to clip that into the top of your figure eight like that, okay? So what that does is it creates a lock here in the event that you let go of the rope, the climber won't fall to the ground. I'm going to pull some slack to raise my climber. Okay, set the knot. Pull all the slack out of the system. Okay, so there's what it looks like when it's ready to lower. When the climber is climbing, uh, first you want to make sure that this knot is good and tight. It's going to hold if you pull down on it, okay? And then you want to lock off the system, okay? And to do that, I just I use what's called a mule knot. Um, reach around, pull that, pull a loop through there like that, get her good and tight, and take one more loop around back through. Take another carabiner. Okay, and just clip that through there, and you can go back through your figure eight here if you want. All that does is just creates a lock so that there's no way the system can come undone, okay, unless you want it to, okay. Now, if you're ready to lower the climber, all you have to do is take out your backup down there, pull your mule knot and your, all those knots loose, okay, so now I'm ready to lower the climber. 
Okay. And all I have to do is just go up here, keep my brake hand on. If I feather that, you'll see now the, the, the rope is coming through the figure eight. Okay, and I can lower my climber to the ground. If I let go, the climber stops. Okay. Okay, so that's the system set up with the figure eight. Uh, so I said you can use almost any kind of belay device here. I'm going to push that up out of our way. Uh, for example, if I wanted to use my hydrobot, I could take All right, so here, there's a hydrobot. To install that on the rope, you just flip it open here, push the rope through like that, and like that, and flip the gate closed, like that, over all tight, like that. Okay, so that's how the it looks when it's set up. Uh, I'm going to pull some slack. Okay, then you're going to clip that into there. You're going to bring this down. In this case, you need a little extension um, to get this set up just right. But let's get it clipped in there first. Okay, I'm going to pull some slack on my or pull some. Bring my climber over here and raise him up a little bit. All right. So, so now I've got it set up to lower the climber, but I've got to clip this in to act as a brake, okay? And to do that, I need some kind of an extension that'll get me from down here. Well, let's just use an extra beaner. And then clip this in up here. Okay, now I've got a break so that if I, once I'm set up to climb, all right, make sure this knot's going to, oh, good, all right. So there's the system set up with the Hydrobot. Um, down here, you want to tie a slip knot. That way, in the event that this doesn't hold, this can't slide through there, okay? So that's the same sort of system set up with just one more example of a, a, a belay device. If I want to lower the climber, I just pull down on this knot here. I actually have to feed rope through it so tight, but you can see that the climber is gradually coming down. And if I want to let go, this knot is going to hold them, all right? So those are just two examples, the figure eight and the hydrobot, two examples of how you can use a, uh, a belay device to set up a lowerable system, okay? Okay, now we'll take that off of there. Got more friction than I need right here. Okay, the last system I'm going to show you is what I call the gearless system. It doesn't require any hardware at all. So we'll take all this off. Okay, for the gearless system, what you want to do is you want to pull all the slack through on one side. Whichever side, the, we're going to say the climber is going to be climbing on this side here. So you want to pull all your slack through over on that side until you have, okay, just enough rope to reach the ground over here, okay? So the climber is going to be climbing on this side. Okay, and you go to the other end of the rope, pull all your slack through here. All right. So now you're going to take this end of the rope around the tree. Okay. Just like that. Okay. Then you're going to tie an alpine and you're going to give yourself about four or five feet of slack on this side here. Then you're going to tie an alpine butterfly right over here. Okay.
Okay, there's your butterfly. Then you're going to run this end of the rope through that right there. Okay, so there's your base linker tied off. And now right over here, okay, so again, my climber's going to be on this end, this end right here. Okay, and over here with the tail of the rope, I'm going to tie off uh, a Blake's hitch on a short, this is my bridge, okay? All right, so we're just going to take the bridge here, take the Blake's hitch, and we're going to do, rather than just a four wrap Blake's hitch, we're going to do a five wrap just to give us more friction, okay? So you just run that up through there like that. Okay, so there's my Blake's hitch, okay? I'm going to pull all the slack out of that, pulling in both directions to get it nice and tight. Okay, there's my Blake's hitch, and then I'm going to tie a stopper knot right here. All right, like that, okay? Now, when the whole thing is set up, that's what it looks like. And I'll attach my climber here. Okay, raise him up a few feet. All right, so now in the, let's raise him up a little higher. Okay, and make sure that that knot's gonna hold, okay, before you start climbing on. Make sure you got it pulled good and tight both directions and all your knots are tight, okay. Make sure you'll have the climber bounce on it good and hard. Right here below it, tie a slip knot. All right. So now we have the system all set up. Uh, if the Blake's hitch doesn't hold, this slip knot will stop against the bottom of it. Okay. Uh, but now, in the event I have to lower the climber, all I got to do is pull that slip knot out of there, keep a hold of the brake hand, reach above my Blake's hitch, and pull down on the Blake's hitch. And you'll see I can lower the climber through the Blake's hitch, okay? If I let go, it'll stop. So that's a gearless system. Uh, works really well if you don't, if you're at all nervous about rope on rope here, you can actually use a carabiner uh, to connect the bottom parts here. But I don't normally do that because there's really no movement down here. Uh, so that's a gearless, uh, lowerable system, okay? All right, so that's, uh, those are pretty much the kinds of systems that I use uh, for tying off basal anchors. Um, at some point I may get around to talking about canopy anchors, but I want to do this one today. All right, happy climbing.